Pastor Jeff Noble, and I want to thank you for watching today. At Four Winds Church, we're kind of a simple church. We believe the Bible is God's Word, and we think that we should pay attention to it. And I hope that you will pay attention to it as you watch this video, because it's all about Jesus. So what are you focused on? We're in the middle of a nation that's now on a verge of war with Russia. <laughs> We got our schools forcing our next generation of leaders to wear masks in fear. We got our communities that are being divided along racial lines via critical race theory propaganda. Our hospitals are promoting protocols for COVID that prioritize the almighty dollar over the care of their patients. Our elected leaders in Washington are more aptly referred to as our selected leaders in the wake of fraudulent 2020 election. And so, what, what are you focused on? <laughs> That's the key. What are you focused on? As for me, I know that I dedicate a significant portion of my life addressing these issues along with the more sundry issues of the world such as drafty windows and dead car batteries. <laughs> we can't ignore these issues. They do need to be addressed. But the challenge for us as Christians is to address them as Christ would, not as the world does. Remember, in this world, you will, you will <laughs> have troubles, but be of good cheer and know that Christ overcame the world. Now, in case you were wondering, that movie clip they were just showing was from a 1960 Disney film called Pollyanna with Haley Mills. It was her big screen debut. Angie and I came across it when we started looking for films that didn't use God's name in vain. Yes. <laughs> and we learned, I, you know, we have all of our streaming music uh, services, and I can tell you um, almost all of them are only partially watched because as soon as they start using God's name in vain, we're done with it. We canceled so many of our TV series, everything else. It's obviously a concerted effort to. <clears throat> to use God's name in vain, and uh, I'll tell you, it's, um, it's a challenge to come across a good movie that does not have uh, somebody using God's name in vain. So how many of you guys have seen the movie Pollyanna? All right, if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, uh, it's very uplifting, and, uh, and it'll tug at your heart pretty much the whole way through. Um, for those of you who haven't, it really is, uh, it is a, it, uh, Haley Mills is just so natural with the way she acts and so genuine. It's just, it just brings you into, um, into the theme of the movie. And, uh, you know, the, the theme, you got a little bit of a taste for it in that short clip, but Pollyanna didn't own anything in the world. Um, from a worldly perspective, she had nothing. Uh, but from the perspective of God's kingdom, she was wealthy beyond compare. And when you see the way it rolls out in the movie, you get a full appreciation for that, how this one person with a godly perspective can change your environment all around you. She grew up the daughter of a missions-based minister who was so poor she couldn't afford to give his daughter a doll as a toy. And you heard a little bit of that story when he asked the villagers to whom he was ministering for a doll that he could give to her. They misunderstood him and gave him a pair of crutches. <laughs> that served as a segue to that little game that she called out called the glad game. Now the objective of the glad game was to find something to be glad about in the midst of less than ideal circumstances. So for example, when she was given a crutch instead of a doll, you heard that she found herself glad that she didn't need the crutches, right? The glad game is simply a metaphor for the passage in God's Word that helped me survive eight years in the Michigan Senate. <laughs> That's Philippians 4.8. Focus on what is noble, true, excellent, and praiseworthy. I have plastered all over my office, and um, it was uh, in all my home as well. And uh, you see, in this world, you will indeed have trouble, but God calls on us to be a good cheer. And it's all a matter of what you focus upon. Now, he's told us that all things work together for good that the, for those who love the Lord. All those bad circumstances we were talking about before, you know, he didn't say some things work together for good. <laughs> he said all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So don't ignore the trials of this world, but shift your perspective. Shift your perspective from that of the world to that of Christ. 
Seek out all that is good. And now, let's play that glad game today, shall we? Mm -hmm. That's right, time for some audience participation on a Sunday morning. Um, I'm going to call out one of the world's troubles, and then you raise your hand and let me know how we can view that situation with gladness as Christians. Sound like a good challenge? All right, let's start. You guys ready? <laughs> all right, so whoever's not ready, guess who gets the first question? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, all right. So, what is one reason to be glad for the following? Audience participation during a sermon. Keeps yeah. alert. Keeps yeah. everybody paying attention. There you go. Right. Okay, excellent. Anybody else? So many other people to be called upon. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, what is one reason to be glad for the following? Being colorblind. Colorblind in which way? Your, your eyes or your mind? As far as like racial stuff, colorblind? Or physically colorblind? Uh, it's a, just a, whichever way you want to interpret it. Impartial. Impartial, okay. So my brother in law's colorblind, and his wife picks out all his clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Face time in the morning, get ready. Yeah, it's all set up. So I'm colorblind too. All right, what's one reason to be glad for the following? Fake news. People are waking up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for that because it makes me dig further for what I think is yeah. the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Time to ratchet up the difficulty just a little bit. All right. What's one reason to be glad for COVID-19? I think it's God's opportunity to wake up the church. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I think it's brought families closer together. Nuclear families. Yeah. We found other remedies on our own. Yeah. 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 You're less dependent. Yeah. All right. Here's one that I have to challenge. Might challenge myself with quite a bit. What is one reason to be glad for evidence of election fraud in the 2020 general election? <laughs> Trump. Truth is exposed. Mm -hmm. Now we know who all the phonies are. Yes. Yeah, it really is rationalizing quite a bit. Remember, all things, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So just because we don't like something doesn't mean that God isn't trying to work in us and in our society to some greater good, to some greater part of his overall plan. And so just because we prefer different circumstances doesn't mean that the current circumstances are not part of a grander plan for God to redeem a broken world. So after all, when God sent us his only son, he didn't send Jesus here so that he could experience a lifetime of Disney cruising, did he? Not at all. His plan to redeem a broken world required sacrifice. The innocent Lamb of Christ died a painful death on the cross so that we could have eternal life. God's ways are not our ways. He's God. We're not. We are not God. Sometimes we like to play God, right? And say, God, why are you doing this? Don't do this. This is what we should be doing. No, we're not God. He's God. So have you ever caught yourself trying to second-guess God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Job did, and he received an epic smackdown from God. Remember that? Our challenge is to trust God in good times and in bad. Remember, even in bad times, God is present. And what's more, he wants you to have joy in all circumstances. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy is not found in the circumstances of life. It's not found at all in the circumstances of life. Joy is found in having a relationship with the one who gave us life. So the prophet Habakkuk, you know, how many times do you think you were going to come in here and hear from Habakkuk? Here, but the prophet Habakkuk followed in the footsteps of Job and shared a whole chapter of complaints, if you remember. Just a complete chapter of complaints about the world with God. 
And uh, God replied that the righteous will live by faith. He went on to assure Habakkuk that he was in control. And in response to God's rebuke, Habakkuk was stirred to praise God. Instead of complaining about the world around him, he broke out in the following testament of faith. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fail, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will be joyful with God my Savior. Now when we're in those fungal circumstances of life, how many of us can honestly praise God in that manner like the Bacchus did? So in the midst of our troubles, God wants us to have joy. He wants us to praise Him. <clears throat> Pollyanna knew that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in the movie, she talked about 800 happy passages in the, uh, to be found in the Bible. So, what Bible passages do you focus upon in times of trouble? Here are a few examples of happy passages that I've found. James, in the first chapter of James, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it joy when you fall into trials? Yeah. Call it joy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. In Psalm chapter uh, 30, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In Romans chapter 15, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Psalm O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. In Proverbs, he who heeds the word wisely will find good, and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. In Psalms, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Happy. So, in all these circumstances of life, you've got to keep that focus of being happy. Therefore, in, in Romans, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And then another passage that got me through eight years in the Michigan Senate is that it's from Philippians chapter four. Um, now that I speak in regard now that I speak in regard to need, uh, not sorry, not that I speak in regard to need. For I have learned in whatever state I am, whatever state I am, to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, Paul was writing this in some of the circumstances of life that he had plenty of opportunities to complain about what was going on, but he didn't. How would he write all these books of the Bible that he wrote with such joy if he was focusing on the worldly circumstances around him? He wouldn't be able to do that. He focused on the ultimate victory. And in First Timothy, we hear, Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing... With these we shall be content. And in James, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. And last, um, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. So I was wondering, did I miss any of your happy passages? Do you guys have any? Yeah? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Absolutely. Any others? The work that he has done, he will complete. Absolutely. Now, I bring that out because one of the things that I found very valuable in my life is that every single morning I'm in God's Word. And that's how you find the happy passages, right? <clears throat> you got to read it in with all the other passages in there 
Um, it all fits together as part of a God's uh, overall plan. And my devotion this morning was on God's Word and how it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes we don't want to to uh, see all the aspects of it because it reveals the condition of our heart sometimes and maybe it's not so good. And we need some correction. Maybe we need to stop looking at it from the worldly perspective and start looking at circumstances from God's perspective. But you learn those happy passages, you learn what God's perspective is on life by immersing yourself in God's Word daily. And uh, I recommend kicking off every single day in God's Word. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm more likely not to take a shower than I am to not read God's Word literally for the last 20 years, day in, day out. And whether or not I grasp it in the appropriate context at that particular time, I'm confident God is going to use it Amen. as He sees fit. Uh, as He's fit. So eventually, I don't have to be perfect on all of this. I don't have to have all this knowledge. All I have to do is seek the one who does have that knowledge and will implant that within me. So it comes from that dedication to making sure that I want to know what he wants me to do before I, I figure out what the world wants me to do. That makes sense? Yes. So I, I think it's pretty easy to say we, we all live in a broken world right now, right? When God made it, it was good, right? Okay. So... It's man's sin that broke the world. So you may look around the world and see evil on the march everywhere we look. Um, you may see bad things happening to good people. You may see good things happening to bad people. <laughs> the world is broken. All right, As an engineer, I get it. Right? Now remember, though, God had a plan to fix it. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to live in this broken world. He experienced the same circumstances that we are experiencing. He experienced an oppressive government. He experienced corrupt leaders. He experienced illness. He experienced betrayal. He experienced the death of loved ones. He experienced his own painful death on the cross. And through it all, he never ceased to express his love for God and for each of us. In the end, he now reigns in glorious victory over all the world's troubles. Remember, in this world you will have troubles, right? You're gonna have it, right? You guys know we're gonna have troubles, right? <laughs> but be of good cheer, for he has overcome the world. Now Francesca Botticelli put it like this in her song, God is Good. Joy comes, tears fall, I'm learning there's beauty in it all. It's not hard to find. You just have to look. God is good. And the one thing I want to make sure everybody understands today is that that is so true. God is faithful. He is trustworthy. And God is good. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Noble. You ever thought about what you're living for? why you exist, what your purpose is? You know, a lot of folks ask that question. And we know where to find the answer. It's right in the Word of God, a book we call the Bible. If you'd like to find out more about what God has to say about things, then I'd invite you to come to Four Winds Church. We're meeting at 31840 West Seven Mile Road in Livonia. Our service times are 8.30 a.m. That's more of a traditional service. And then our 11 o'clock service is going to be more contemporary, a blending of traditional and contemporary music. If you'd like to see what God has to say about things, we invite you to come to Four Winds. If you'd like some more information, go to fourwindslove.org and you'll find out everything you need to know. I hope I'll see you Sunday. God bless.